so many had high hopes and you know they are now on the precipice of eight straight losses potentially could finish on 10 losses straight uh, if, if the trend continues. All right, let's play catch up fans on the left side. Rakan, Kindred, Talia over on the right. Aatrox, Akali, Zoe, first pick Trundle, Ferris, Gragas, Ash, we're all caught up. You did it. All right, so Trundle as the first pick is something we have not seen in a while, especially when Nocturne is up. Uh, I was surprised to see Nocturne just get completely skipped over by both teams. Uh, pick, moving through picks and bands extremely fast. Gragas kind of as the answer to that Trundle is, is also Definitely a little bit surprising. You have to remember, though, it is more of an AP Gragas these days than a uh, you know, pure tank. A lot of players are just going Runic Echoes and Azonias and these sorts of builds, so you're not going to be able to steal as many pure stats as, as you would have before had this been a Cylinder Hulk in the pure tank style of build. So certainly the dueling there becomes a little bit better. There also is the potential of Darshan taking this Gragas up to the top lane, so we'll have to watch out for that. Gangplank, though, as the things do slow down as CLG's first ban in Phase 2, they'll join it with Na and Syndra was the fourth ban there for Flycurse. We'll see what number five is here. Yeah, it will be interesting. I mean, a lot of focus on Flame over there on the top side. Uh, this may be because Darshan is going to be the kind of unlucky blind pick here for his team. Uh, if you are going to be picking him right next in, in that fourth slot, uh, as I am expecting with that double ban. Mundo has been taken away here also, so a lot of the safest top lane picks are gone, and it, and it is going to be Darshan getting locked in on the Shogun, so makes a lot of sense. You take away some of those traditional tough, tough matchups, but there are still others available for Flame uh, if he is willing to play a little bit more risky. This would constitute that somewhat. You can see Flame like he's conversing yeah. with his coach and teammates. Oh, I don't, I don't love... Rumble into, into Cho'Gath. It's one of those matches for sure you can have the very early push, but uh, Cho'Gath actually has pretty strong sustain and pretty strong kind of anti-push and pushing power himself. Uh, and if Rumble really can't kind of get you stuck under that turret, I think it becomes very difficult. So I would be a little bit surprised to see it. Um, but there are options if you want to play a little bit more risky, uh, like something along the lines of the Jace. Uh, but it is going to be the Rumble, so we'll see how much he's going to be able to get out of that early priority. Once Shogat starts to build up some of the MR, once he gets to things like the Abyssal, it can become a lot tougher, especially in this kind of modern era where more and more people are actually going uh, for Comet on all of these tanks and some of these pushing matchups. So uh, we'll see how well Flame can handle this, but certainly there is a potential to be outscaled. Either way, Trundle is going to be there to deal with Cho'Gath in later stages. Yep, certainly is, as Ariana is the last pick after Rise Rumble there for FlyQuest. So very standard between these two. Maybe the Rumble sticking out there for Flame has historically trended towards, you know, more Bruiser, more carry style champions. But as you said, could be tough here against Darshan with his tank of choice on Shogat. But I think both these teams kind of looking for the same thing despite being in very different positions in the league. Currently, CLG want to pick up what wins they can. If by some miracle they can rattle off three straight, then there are shots they can still make here for FlyQuest. Again, looking to secure that playoff berth. Do you need a win here? And then one more for sure, I think, gets them there. But no reason to lose now this late in the season, especially against a team that has been struggling all year long. And this does actually make three straight Rumble games here uh, for Flame. So obviously very comfortable in the matchup. He played it into GP. Uh, actually, both games, you know, against Impact and against Solo. So uh, this is his first time having a crack at it against a tank. So we'll see how well he's going to be able to perform. And yeah, I mean, the other thing you always have to take into consideration when you're looking at these low ranked teams is they're playing for their spot. Certainly true. I mean, talk a lot about CLG being such a storied org. I think no one expected someone as entrenched in the org as Zix to leave so late in the season. And so now you have to start questioning for players that have been, now been around together for quite a long time. And you think about names like Darshan, been around forever. Kuhi has kind of become one of the faces of his team yeah. since his other, you know, former, more famous teammates, if you will, have left the organization. So thinking that there could be more change on the horizon certainly has to be in some of these players' minds. Yeah, I mean, you want to have strong performances. You want to prove that you are worth keeping around because uh, when a team is, is willing to drop a coach who has been with the org for five years, you know, they are certainly willing to drop players as well after a year of disappointing results here for CLG. Theoretically, there still is a path into playoffs, I do believe. Uh, they are not mathematically eliminated until they lose one more game, but uh, for a team that has lost seven straight, rattling off three straight wins after getting rid of your head coach is going to be a tall task. Yeah, for FlyQuest, it's who do you want to be tied with? Do you want to be tied with TSM and Optic, splitting at eight and eight, or do you want to be tied with Ego Fox and Cloud9? Given the trajectory of those teams, I think I know where I'd rather be. 
as we move in towards our last week, actually, of the NLCS. This is our last game of week eight. And FlyQuest, despite the fact that, you know, a lot of criticism has been levied their way for their unconvincing wins, a lot of their kind of base race style games that have you know, been pretty crazy, uh, they have one of the easiest schedules remaining. So they got a lot of those crazy wins against top level teams, right? They have, you know, I believe statistically the easiest schedule remaining. So FlyQuest certainly in a very, very good position to be able to lock in playoffs. And, you know, Mark was willing to say on the analyst at the top of the day during countdown that he's willing to bet on it, right? That he's, he's confident mm -hmm. enough that it's basically a done deal. So we'll see if FlyQuest can kind of make good on that and allow Mark to keep his pride. But also not called Counterlogic Gaming for nothing. So let's see what happens here as uh, JJ and Wild Turtle will join late here after helping Santorin over on his red buff. Looks like blue, uh, red side start for Rainover also, which is of course cross map from FlyQuest's current position. Here with the Varus Brom, seen a lot of this today. Actually seen a lot of this exact matchup 2v2. Yeah. It's becoming kind of the go-to, right? And as games have gotten slower, people want you know, a lot of these scaling marksmen uh, to kind of be in the mix. And when you bring in marksmen, when they are higher priority, then tanks become higher priority because it's about protecting those marksmen, enabling them in the late game, and everything starts to slow down a little bit, which then brings in strategies like split push, where you can kind of spread the map a bit more. So uh, the meta certainly has taken a shift, and you know, we've seen less and less mages on this path. I believe just one this week. I can only think of the Swain from Lost. Yeah, in Did actually lose. Yes, have not been too many there. Swain over here, chugging through the Raptors. Does take them down. Hulk shot from Turtle. Does just spot him, I believe. So we'll have some info on what Rainover's up to. And of course, likely saw the other two camps that they are gone. Looks like Crab though for Santorin. Takes the left side scuttle. Rainover going to do the same there on the opposite side. Yeah, Rainover just going for basically a power clear. And he may actually try to get down and. Uh, perhaps steal away the Krugs, but for now, not going to be the option. Checking for vision. And sweep through. Did do a full clear topside, so he grabs the scuttle. He can have then all of these camps to clear up and should be a little bit ahead of Santorin in that regard, but did obviously spend some time trying to get vision as well. And Santorin may have time to actually get back to base and get out on the map and, and even up those camps before it really becomes anything. Big wave here being built up by Stick and by for us, and they are going to escort it here to the turret. Trying to see if they can't deny some away from Turtle, who's going to try and hit them as best he can under the turret. Took there, there. A little bit of poke. Actually going lethal tempo here. Seen a lot of comments today on Varus for the extra lane power and poke, but not here for Stixie. Yep, and this is going to mean that he's doing an auto attack focus build. It should not be lethality with the lethal tempo. We're expecting a Blade of the Rune King rush, Blade of the Rune King, Rage Blade Hurricane, this sort of style where it is physical damage focus, it is auto attack based. And, you know, they don't have a lot of damage in this comp, really. There's a lot of sustained damage, so, you know, you kind of need that from him. And both junglers end up just doing six camp clear plus scuttle, so you know, no real gank attempts uh, from either side. They're both going to end up with the same amount of arms, same amount of clear. Very relaxing for those four minutes of the it game. Is. Yeah. The, it's the no rush. Yeah, <laughs> even mid lane, just farming back and forth. Rise Ariana tends to do that. He gonna lose the race to first pack here. King with a nice timing, also has TP, but probably won't commit it here. Just gonna go back and pick up some mana crystals. Oh, I'm told why he is gonna TP back. And Darshan does actually elect and not go for combat. He's just gonna go grass. Rumble obviously is a melee champion, so you don't need that. You know, it's, it's definitely not a, a must have by any means, but you can see Rumble is not really pressuring this lane heavily. You know, the farm is fairly even, Darshan is full HP. It uh, can be one of the more difficult tank matchups, I think, to fully for the Rumble in the early stages. Shogath really does kind of excel as far as the wave clear does go. Yeah, nice lead here, actually. Just six eight and five of farm, yeah. yeah, more than ten as they'll take these next few. Okay, now dematerializing. Oh, so juicy. <laughs> Love that little combo. The Rise Wave here, very, very strong. But, I mean, he still has all his charges on his Corrupting Potion, so doesn't have to go back to base just yet, but now does take a, a little bit of a rough trade. We may see Junglers come around, just help him push out, and Ooh. fight on the bot side. Okay. Here. Yeah, that's a stun into the Devour. Biofrost forced to flash away, has no sums left. Stun eat arrows from the Ash. Flash forward, first blood's over, Turtle! He's gonna grab it, and now Stick Stay, gotta be careful. Yeah, JJ very low as well. Turtle is oh, gonna die! Okay, that was too much. Yeah, Turtle just kind of continued the fight there. Both ADs have flash, both of them just decide to fight it out, and it is Stixie that gets a kill back. He does survive and with the farm advantage, he's ahead, but now oh, there's a dive. Beautiful dive. Shockwave's not bad from Huhi, but it's an easy one there for Santoro and Keen is forced to flash away. But he will get out safely. Yeah, nicely done on the dive there from FlyQuest, who he hadn't gone back to base yet, so 
really not a lot of power in the kit here. And Biofrost stepping forward when already tongue lashed, not something you really ever want to do. I mean, you want to wait until those those hunger stacks kind of expire from the Tom Kench. So he gets a stun into the eight. Exhaust him, flash forward for the auto, and Turtle gets a, an easy first blood there without even having to flash, but then decides, hey, I'm going to fight this out, but the stacks are on him from Styx A and nails the piercing arrow. That is a deceptive amount of damage that you can put out there. So despite the fact that first blood went to Turtle, it is Styx A who is still ahead, you know, thanks to that farm advantage, but it is very, very close. Well played there by Styx A. Unfortunately for Bifrost, not so much. Let's see if this exchanges to increase, especially with lots of summoners burnt, maybe junglers want to start paying some attention. Yeah, I mean, I, I do think it would be a, an easy lane to gank for Rainover. He has his ultimate, Tom Kench has no flash. Uh, so certainly something that you can look to attack. Either way, wasn't expecting this to be <laughs> any sort of a kill lane. This is generally a very passive farm lane, but if you make mistakes, you can be punished. And thankfully for CLG, they do trade it back and Rainover running into flame. Yep. The great time. Oh, actually, ults him back. Smites him down as well. Here's the Realm Mob, though, from King. He's going to move in. Does get the root down. That should be a kill. Greg is not that tanky. Rainover actually may be able to get away. No, not so lucky. But here's Darshan going to try and again force another CLG trade. No shockwave. It's about 15 seconds away. His Flaming King dip, dodge away, and blast cone to safety, and still the red buff. Yeah, I mean, Rainover ults him in, but Darshan wasn't there. Who he doesn't have ultimate, so there's no follow up damage to actually get that kill. And they say, oh, okay, I guess we'll just fight. So. Uh, they do kill off Rainover. Uh, Santorin getting involved there with the ultimate, now stealing away the red buff. So everything looking like it's going FlyQuest's way. And again, for what was to come first four minutes, FlyQuest has done a really good job reading CLG's patterns, setting things up for themselves. This is, I think, something that's pretty underrated about FlyQuest as a team. They're not particularly flashy, and a lot of their end games, as you said, have looked pretty messy. Yeah. But they're just a really solid team. Yeah, they are very, very solid. I mean, they, they have massively improved since actually, you know, arriving at this roster. You know, bringing in JJ, bringing in Santora, and the team has gotten so much better. So, you know, a far cry from where they were in Spring Split, and they do deserve a lot of credit uh, for that constant improvement that they have been able to achieve. And for CLG, it has been a whole year pretty much, well, a whole split at least, of strong early games, but weak mid and late. And, you know, this game now they don't, really have that early game buffer to work with and they have not been able to actually make anything happen in the mid and late game so we'll see if they can kind of pull something out if they can show something a little bit special that's there from total to spot rainover also in general from the flank west duo to suspect rainover's pressure as he did hang out in that brush for quite a long time but no success gank there flame also getting some pressure down here in the top mm -hmm. looks like darshan is going to come back after eating a little bit of damage. And yeah. Stixay Bio is still playing up in this lane. Stixay, again, has that farm lead, has that kill. He's kind of the, the good note here for CLG's early game. Yeah, and he, he think has really been kind of a, one of the bright spots for CLG throughout this split. I still think that his laning has been very strong. His laning stats have been solid. Shockwave is available for him to be here, so they could potentially look for Keen. And Shudarshan, I think he went back to base because he's worried about a potential dive. His jungler was on the bottom side of the map. He knew Trundle could be up at the top, so... I'm going to be a bit worried about that, but we'll be able to get out there, and looks like he's probably going to be building towards, you know, maybe an adaptive or something like that. This could also just be pieces of an abyssal as he works towards that item. Makes sense, though, for the early MR. Flame also has gone back as his mask already finished up. And Santorin, once again, back here towards his bot side of the map, but this time it's not just the bot lane that he can look to attack. It is the Inferno, which he will start. Yeah, and that's going to be a really nice dragon for them to grab you know, kind of securing uh, some of that scaling advantage that they already are sitting on. I think a lot of credit to Wild Turtle. This Hawkshot is not going to actually catch much, but he has been pretty on point with tracking right over uh, throughout the game with that Hawkshot. So definitely doing a, a very good job there. And it's it's one of those things that is really kind of goes unseen a lot of the time, I think, with Ash. You know, I've had a lot of people kind of ask me sometimes, you know, why, why do pros pick Ash so much? And this is one of the reasons the vision is so damn good, but FlyQuest going for the dive. This feels very mean. Six a not really much to do there. Does get taken out by Keen and JJ. Even moves the aggro off of Turtle by devouring him. Really well played. Yeah, very clean dive from them there. CLG will try to trade back, grabbing this Rift Herald, but that's going to mean their turret just goes down. I doubt that Biofrost can actually keep this one alive. Nothing really Stixay could do. He holds onto the flash, but they're going to lose the first turret. They lost the Infernal. 
trying to get something back with the Rift Herald, but we'll see if they can convert on that and really kind of knock down a couple turrets to make this trade worth well. These tech there for Darshan, not too bad. They've got the Herald, of course, as well. See if they can look to trade those turrets, but of course that extra gold already over to FlyQuest, who are swapping a duo up towards the top side. Rain over here has Flash. Looking for Keen, but Keen with a really good Flash. Yeah, very respectful there from Rainover. You can't react once they've already flashed because the Body Slam flash is going to hit you, is going to stun you up. So as soon as you see them Body Slam, if you suspect it's coming, you've got to flash early. Keen does so, gets out of there. No need to risk it, really. Your team is so far ahead, right? You can trade a summoner like that and feel fine about it. So gets Rainover's flash as well. So at least the trade there for Keen is going to stay alive. And Keen's going to just mow down creep waves here with Rise. And we can see Turtle already up to the top side. The lane swap has not come through for CLG. So Turtle is going to be very soon working away on this turret. Darshan doesn't have his TP just yet. Uh, may just be a, a turret trade here. CLG is trying to knock down the one on the bottom side. They're going to drop Rift Herald. So they're going to try to push for two. And this is a pretty nice move from them. If they can knock down both, this does become pretty worthwhile. And we'll see if FlyQuest can look to respond. Maybe Flame and try to do something about it. But without the Equalizer, I honestly think CLG just get two turrets, no problem. He's 10 seconds away from the ult, so FlyQuest will take the turret, but again, the charge is here. Flame, ooh, actually gonna use a TP That's JJ coming in. Okay. This is gonna go down, so they have to commit something. They decide support summoner is the best thing to do. Yeah, that's just the Spellbook TP, so not really much of a cost. They were moving down Trundle and Rise as well, so denying CLG that double turret there. Still, Rainover and the rest of CLG doing a good job getting something from that Rift Herald, which they really, really needed to do because they had lost a lot. They lost first turret, they lost Infernal, they lost the kill. So they needed to get some wins, and uh, this is something to get them back on the board a little bit, but still, uh, they are very far behind for this early on in the game. It's already over 3,000 gold. <laughs> I wonder where he was That's going. pretty cute. But waiting for Santorin so they can steal the red buff on spawn. Cool little pairing there. And Centauron, yeah, he'll grab the red buff. Denied away from Rainover. That's some super feels bad man counter jungling. Yeah, that's pretty rough. Rainover lost his last red, and as you said, gonna lose this one on spawn. So, uh, tough stuff for them. And he is falling behind. You know, and, and one of those things you always kind of want to bail out into a more tanky style build as Gragas when you are behind, but. You know, that kind of works more in Trundle's favor as well. So uh, that's going to be tough to deal with. You can see all of the Merc Trats already being purchased up here by FlyQuest. Three of them on the top side to deal with any potential CC that can come through from CLG. You know, Stix A still really is the only one that is kind of ahead. He has a farm advantage. They have similar item timings here in the bottom side of the map. But even with his edge... Everyone else is kind of falling behind. Mid lane is fairly behind. Top lane is falling behind. They're losing turrets. They're losing objectives. And they're going to need to find some good engages. Ooh, good ult. Better devour. JJ just scoops turtle up to safety. Now the counter arrow is going to come. He's blocked by Biofrost. Ult also used there by Rainover to disengage the fight. Yeah, Rainover throws that out. You know, I wonder if they could have just gone and gone for a bit of a fight there. I think Biofrost had done a good job blocking up a lot of that damage. So potentially they could have looked to turn it around either way. It is just the trade of alts. No summoner is really down for either team, so not too big of a deal on either side. And, you know, Flame going to be continuously shoving Darshan in. Uh, uh, JJ, sorry, actually going to get stunned, so he's forced to flash away there. He's just exhausted as well by the looks of things, so maybe Rhonova now can start something else. But Spotted out. Spotted by the hawk shot. Such a nice job there by Turtle. So just, again, anticipating the fact that someone could be in that brush, he checks it out. Shuts down the play before it even gets started. And FlyQuest really just pressing on all sides at this point. You know, extending this goal lead slowly but surely. And now, again, keeping their dual in anchored mid. Nice spot for them to be with both Wise and Rumble. It would have pretty effectively crushed down those side lanes. I mean, already up 3,500 gold or so. Pretty big early game lead here for FlyQuest with one trick as well with the ocean spawning in just under a minute for them to maybe look to. CLG, they've done a, generally a good job as a team this year. And of course, this split as well of reacting and trading, but you need a little bit more than that to close out games, which is obviously part of the reason they've had some struggles. Yeah, you really do. I mean, you need to be well coordinated, uh, well focused in setting up the objectives, and FlyQuest starting this one out. Yet another play, Stix A gonna be forced to flash out by a Frost, maybe the next target, but they'll just take the flash and leave it. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice trade. I think that the, the Trundle Pillar with the Equalizer there is actually a pretty nice combo. It makes you know, engaging with that Equalizer more reasonable if you can kind of bump them back into it and kind of lock them down with that huge Trundle Pillar slow. 
So a good roam and attempt there from FlyQuest, gets them a summoner, and it, this game is really going to be on the back of 6A. You pretty much have to be able to be carrying in the team fights as this Varus, so there's going to be a lot of attention on him, and getting the summoner down there is actually a pretty big deal because it really is essentially three-man frontline, an Orianna, and then the Varus. And sure, Shockwave can be very impactful, but so much of the consistent damage has to come from 6A. Everyone else is also behind, and he's the one that's at least even. So CLG to the same group here to try and contest for this Drake. Meanwhile, Keen with his TP almost back up. He's just splitting top lane, looking to take down another turret here. And likely will just knock it down. No one's really in position. Uh, we do see that who he's going up top side now. Uh, the rest of CLG does get down a dragon, but nice Tom Kench ultimate from JJ. So this should secure them in the turret. We'll see if they want to stick around. Shockwave comes in to clear it out, so nicely done by Huhi, but his turret will still fall. Yep, that's a wave, gets some damage down, but not enough to save it, unfortunately, for him. So instead, he'll wait for the wave and collect it now that they've left. CLG trying to kind of push mid lane here. 3v1 right now, just sent Toron looking to defend this. Arrow coming. It's Firefrost. It's gonna buy some time. Ooh, Flame actually also over the wall. It's actually enough to deter the push. Really nice stuff there from Turtle. Yeah, really good arrow. Just shooting that out does slow down that push. and. You know, they can't commit for a fight after it, but they're happy to just kind of clear the wave, defend that turret. Flame is behind Santorin, and they know that would be a tough dive to make. So, CLG will back off and take the kind of poor end of the trade once again. They do get the ocean, but they lose a turret, and they lose pressure on the map once more. I mean, doing what they can, but it's tough to trade effectively when you are behind, although yeah. sometimes it is your only option against CLG. Doing a good job keeping the game afloat. The FlyQuest have been really good at being proactive here in this game, using JJ's ultimate continually, using arrows and hawk shots from Turtle, even something like Equalizer or Keen's pressure. FlyQuest kind of know the different things that their comp and their cooldowns can do, and they're doing a nice job staying proactive and pressuring CLG. Yeah, you know, they show like a good understanding of Temple, and that's one of the things that St. Vicious was talking about in his interviews. You know, talking about the fact that he feels many pros do not have a solid understanding of, of what Temple is, of how long it takes to get places on the map, of how long it takes to t kill turrets and get objectives. And, you know, he felt his team has a strong understanding of that. And that was one of the big things he actually credited uh, for his team being able to win a lot of these crazy trades. They understand that, okay, it's going to take us X amount of time to kill off the base, X amount of time to charge this inhibitor. This team is being too slow. We can get that trade. We can get that advantage. And they're kind of you know, trying to showcase that here once again. Still up 4K. Uh, CLG, actually both teams being pretty stubborn here in the mid lane, wanting to mm -hmm. take down that outer turret. The Rift Child's off the board, of course. CLG already took it for the bottom outer. So no easy way to get it here with plenty of wave clear protecting here as well. And if CLG can just kind of keep it into this sort of ARAM style game where they're both farming it out, they're going to feel pretty good. But Flame is TPing in, or here they come. Oh, good equalizer there as well. Flame with the flank. Here comes Keen. Realm Warp in. They've already got one. They've taken out Stick Save. And now they're going to try and get the combo back oh, in, but nice JJ devour. mid air flight devour. Going to save Keith in the Greg Assault. Yeah, that was beautiful. Flame with the flank ultimate there, and Keen TPing in on the side. FlyQuest able to get another nice kill, taking down 6A, who didn't have the flash from that earlier play, right? So again, you know, forcing that out. It was the previous Equalizer from Flame when he came mid that they got 6 a Flash. As soon as the Equalizer's up again, they go mid, they get a kill. That is really textbook League of Legends. That is very good stuff to see. There's so many times where you see teams you know, force out a summoner, never capitalize off of it. FlyQuest does so here, and they're going to be able to even get the turret. They're getting the top turret. They're pressing on all sides. Uh, CLG just feels like they're kind of rolling over. And this is, again, the thing that really impresses me about FlyQuest. They do not play flashy, they do things by the book, but the way they react and how quickly they're willing to do things like this is what impresses me. Yeah, and I, I didn't see Flame at the top side of the screen in the first play, and it, it was actually Rive keeping in, as I said, so Flame in position, hits the Equalizer, they get the kill, a beautiful Devour there from JJ, saving his teammate from that ultimate from right over, and Flyquest just feel like they're doing everything a little bit better than CLG. It really is the lone bright spot of Stixe right now. I think for CLG, who's you know, kind of holding even-ish, but even for him, you know, if there's not additional threats, it becomes so difficult to actually stay safe because everyone is focusing their resources on you, so who he needs to scale up, become a threat. You know, Darshan needs to scale up and, and really become tanky enough that he can kind of withstand some of the punishment that Flyquest is putting out. Cold League growing here for Flyquest. Um, Closing in on 6,000 here with another Drake spawning in a minute. 55 oh, arrow! No. 
nails Darshan out of the TP and three collapse. Darshan nowhere good to go except the fountain. Wild yeah. Turtle gonna grab it. That feels so, so bad. The six minute teleport cooldown. It does get canceled, but still it's such a long cooldown on this patch. Not only do you go down, you waste the TP. Flame still has his available, and FlyQuest again getting an advantage. CLG trying to get some vision around Baron. Uh, worried about any potential Baron attempts off of that from FlyQuest, but for now, FlyQuest looks like they're happy to just continue farming, take their pick, and just continue pressuring on the map. I like that you say worried about Baron attempts, because I do agree with you, but for a second there, I thought it was going to be the opposite. Just <laughs> rush the Baron, because... CLG have to be getting frustrated. The four-man Baron attempt at 21 minutes, 7,000 behind. With, no, with a TP-less yeah. yeah, that good. That would be pretty bold. I mean, but at a certain point, you know, even you, you talk about playing to win, at a certain point, your 5% play becomes, becomes your, the, play. The, the best chance to win, right? And CLG are not there yet. No. Um, but they are, you know, they are getting closer and closer. When you're, when you're down 7K, when you're down in Infernal, when you're losing on all sides in a game like this, you, know, you are looking at slimmer and slimmer margins the longer the game goes because FlyQuest is farming both sides of the jungle oftentimes. They're getting advantages on all sides and that just gets tougher and tougher and tougher. You're running a one true tank composition here. Trundle is exceptionally strong into one tank teams because it essentially turns the Trundle into super tank himself while shredding Darshan. So CLG need to make a play. They need to find something. JJ's at it again. Down to the bot Back side. To Darshan, who's still got no flash, by the way. Oops, on Turtle, though. They're all lined up. Turtle, though, steps out of there. They wait their time, and FlyQuest again play it so clean. Yeah, very well done. Right as Darshan responds, he heads down a bottom lane. He gets ulted on, taken out. Don't play pop. Oh, nice equalizer. He's going to cut Whoa, the ball. That was so good. Well, Six and Huey about to get Wombo now. Flame, flash forward, takes down Huey. Six they going to burn down as well. JJ saves Flame, and FlyQuest make it look so good. Up against CLG. That equalizer from Flame was incredible. Completely cut off. Their only escape path. There was no win situation there for CLG. They can't go forward and fight. They're walking back through the equalizer, getting absolutely shredded and keep following up with that Realm War. Fly Quest just take everything. And it was only a couple minutes ago I said they're not there yet for that 5% play. I think if you're CLG, you're, you're ready to flip that coin. You're ready to take that low percentage play because double infertile, 10,000 gold lead, 23 minutes in is is getting very bleak. And again, think about the decisiveness that last little call there from FlyQuest. Bot inhibitor turret goes down, instantly back away. You know you don't have time to take that in here. Just yeah. go take the drake. I can't really remember the last time I saw so many effective equalizers. Flame has been really on point, being very proactive. Uh, with this, you see once again, JJ ulting them down to the bottom of the lane. The Abyssal Voyage comes in. It is on Wild Turtle, which makes it a little bit harder to pull off, but does get devoured up. Spat back into Wild Turtle. They take him down. Then the push comes in. Watch this equalizer from Flame. It's just picture perfect. They have to retreat through that. Six has a flash into the equalizer to try to get out. There is no escape for CLG. No way to win that fight from that position. And JJ even adding insults or injury. Saves Flame up. They clean four kills for zero. Another turret. FlyQuest. We wanted a clean win, and they are giving it to us. Certainly. Uh, personally, I would love to know uh, how long JJ's ult has been up since he had it, because it feels like <laughs> almost never using it at pretty up, much every available kill. opportunity. <laughs> Again, FlyQuest in general, just playing the map well and being so proactive and aware of their cooldowns. It is wonderful to watch as Keen going to get the top side started once again. Flame also threatening with the TP, with the ulti onto that open exposed inhibitor. And CLG are left to do basically this. Hide in a brush in their jungle and put your pumps together. Yep, again, it's it's the 5% play. You're, you're looking for something. It's hiding in a brush. It's hoping they throw a Baron. It's hoping that, you know, the wheels kind of completely fall off. Or FlyQuest, not just once, but twice or three times or four times. Uh, really, he's got to get back into this. He did it again! Pressing the ult. Looks like Chogun oh. is going to die. That's the flash. This time does you to dodge the arrow. Moral victory, he escaped. Uh, bigger problems. <laughs> Still, they've almost lost their whole base. Yep, that is definitely a problem. They lost that uh, bot lane inhibitor tower earlier, and now the full Baron vision control is kind of coming into effect here for FlyQuest. You can see so many wards around that area. Here we They're go. going to run warp straight into the pit, and right onto it, that ward is disabled by their pink, and Rainover does know it's happening. 
This would be oh, a way in for flame. CLD if they can steal it. Let's see. This equalizer is so juicy. He's going to find it under two. Flame is just going to find it out. They're looking to finish Baron. And FlyQuest do do it. Flame, he is going to fall, but a worthy sacrifice. Yeah, that's what I call dying for the team there from Flame. He takes away any chance of a 50-50. He gives up his life, but he guarantees the Baron, and that is good stuff from Flame. Really heads up play. Making sure Rainover has no chance of getting into pit, no chance of fighting through him and stealing away that Baron, because that was really the only way back in for CLG. So for FlyQuest, double Infernal, Baron buff available. When Flame respawns, I really do think you can march it down and, and potentially just end the game. At this point, it just feels like you look at the Baron timer, that's the amount of time FlyQuest have to win this yeah. game. They are so far ahead. Everything is going their way, and Keen's going to start the party off early by trudging down bot lane here and moving the minions in. And and for the side of CLG, you know, they're, the only hope that they have is getting a pick which delays the Baron buff, right? If you can get an immediate kill early on in the Baron buff, if someone is splitting away from the team, you pick someone off, maybe FlyQuest has to back up, maybe you can't actually get that. But that is why FlyQuest is walking around as a team. They're kind of converging on one where Keen is. Look at all the pink wards now on this side of the map. This is where they want to push. Three pinks immediately down. FlyQuest is really doing a good job prepping their vision. There was so many pinks on the other side of the map. Now they move three over here. They have five on the map. They have full vision controlled so hard for CLG from that spot to really find a way to get in. You can see Kane sets up the siege pink there. Gets the minions going. FlyQuest have the timing almost perfect on these waves in mid and bot lane. And top lane's pushing as well, right? So you can potentially just rotate up as that wave stacks. Baron buff it up. Send flame up to the top lane even. And three waves of Baron minions coming in becomes so incredibly tough. Here are them going for the pick. Looking for Kane, they do knock him back, but he's actually reasonably tanky getting bounced around. He's gonna pop the realm up, Kane! Shut down just barely by Stixey. And that's what CLG needed, because FlyQuest did not have the minions in position to actually pressure on that turret to go for a dive. So all the credit to CLG there. They pull off a good play, get the pick on Kane, and that is the sort of thing that you need to look to delay this out, to buy time, because if Flame was pushing at the same time in the top side, if that mid lane was being pushed in at the same time, you would not be able to kind of go for that play unpunished. Instead, they find the window. Keen gets shut down, but he does have TP, and there's still a minute 20 on the buff. It's a small one, but it is really the first obvious misstep that we've seen in this game from FlyQuest. CLG, again, just trying to keep them away from their base and their inhibitors safe. Yeah, I mean, the longer you delay, uh, the better you're feeling about this game, but it is a long, long road for CLG to come back in. This one, and a third Infernal is going to be spawning in a minute. That is so hard to win. I, I don't know what the percentage of games you win are when the, the opponents have triple Infernal, but I'm willing to bet it's like 10% or less, and that's, that's you know, not even considering all of the gold lead there. So FlyQuest pushing up here. Keen has TP back out, and they're still trying to pressure with the Baron. He's actually uh, doing a decent job poking at Darshan here. But again, just the real price is these turrets, all this Infinita placed in bot lane. Yeah, Turtle wants to step forward and get shots onto this turret, but it is very hard. So for now, hey, oh, they're going. going. Flash there from Zantoran trying to chomp down Huhi. That should be enough space to take that inhib number one. Bot side does fall. Yeah, they're going to knock that down. Another well-placed equalizer there from Flame. Gets the flash, gets them the inhibitor. And with 10 seconds on the Baron buff, I think they just retreat back to the Infernal. Looks like <laughs> that's where they're going to head. Oh, they're actually the red buff. <laughs> Stealing the red buff. Oh, my God. Poor rain over. So they're going to push top. They can always retreat back to the Infernal. For now, I think they're kind of just trying to set a trap and see if anyone comes. But definitely don't want to see FlyQuest giving this up. You need to see them being prepared. But Turtle does have TP. Could get back down there. You do want to secure the third Infernal. You want to maintain that neutral objective advantage because that is so huge, having 24% additional AP and AD. Two steps ahead there for FlyQuest, it feels like. Fortunately for them, they won't get anything extra other than the Drake they were almost guaranteed to get. But still a nice move again. JJ being proactive using the ult. No, he's not going to need it. So it's cool down his back up. The FlyQuest able to continue their pressure, threaten another inhibitor, but back off and just take the Drake when that doesn't work out. Yeah, and CLG wanted to walk five man strong into the into the Dragon Pit and hope for a miracle fight, but you saw as soon as they, they saw Turtle up on the top side, that is like flashbacks to all the base trade type games from Wild Turtle. and you know, from FlyQuest, so they did not have the confidence to go into that. They decided to base, they decided to bend. Hey, we're trying to play for late, you're trying to play for scaling, but, you know, it's it's trying to do this very, very uphill battle, right? You know, all the cards are stacked against them. Gave it 
You know, we talked about the five cent play at some point. I think we're yeah. well past that point. I'm not going to put a number on it, but it is low. Yeah. I mean, I, I give him maybe 5% chance to win okay. this game. I could, you could maybe win this game 1 in 20 times, right? Um, but that 4. is... 4.99. Yeah, okay, that's fair. <laughs> but it, but it, it's a tough one, right? And, and when you're looking at, like, a 5% game that's no longer in your hands, that's it's down to your opponents to really make repeated mistakes to kind of slowly claw your way back in. Uh, because the only way you win this game is if it goes incredibly late. And that is going to take a lot of mistakes, a lot of missteps, as well as a lot of great plays from CLG. Continue diligence from FlyQuest again. Turtle using that hook shot. Just looking for CLG because he knows when you're 5% to win, your options are very limited. Yeah. The Turtle just making sure to shut those down as well. And it's tough. I mean, 6A was kind of that, that lone bright spot, you know, staying more or less even. But now it's Wild Turtle on four completed items. Uh, you can see that 6A is on two and, and a couple of pieces. You know, when he hits that Hurricane, when he hits that IE, when he hits that true late game, maybe he could tread through a fight if, if they can protect him long enough, but he's not at that point just yet. He needs more time, so it's going to be up to the CLG squad to try to wave clear, try to look for something as FlyQuest comes in five minutes strong. Arrow again finds good equalizer once more by Flame going to cut off the back line. FlyQuest though just looking for the turret. Darshan Loaf, Turtle Flash is full, of course! Takes down Darshan, that's going to open up the mid in here. And they could potentially just end this. I mean, that's the tank down. Super minions are there from the bottom lane. They are on these Nexus turrets. Straightforward is FlyQuest. We asked for a clean win, and it seems like they will deliver. CLG fighting desperate in their base to try and keep their Nexus up. But it looks like it is all for naught. Flame flashes forward. Gonna burn down Stix. A CLG retreating to the fountain. Rain over dead. Nexus exposed. And FlyQuest will end their week with a win. FlyQuest is absolutely dominating here against CLG, picking up another win for themselves. Looking really strong in the second half. Another win on the weekend, two win zero. And they are, you know, essentially all but guaranteed to get into playoffs now. That Again, nine wins, has never missed playoffs before. They still have two games remaining, and they have one of the easier schedules going into next week. FlyQuest is going to play Golden Guardians. Um, and then Cloud9, who is on a hot streak, but they should be in the playoffs now. It's not guaranteed just yet, but still very impressive stuff from them. Pretty clinical from FlyQuest, you know, start to finish. Very impressed with Flame in particular, was monstrous on the Rumble. His equalizers were so, so good. JJ and Turtle were everywhere. I mean, it was a whole team effort. And the future is very bright for FlyQuest. I mean, we have not just, you know, probably in playoffs given the win, but uh, playing for a potentially a very good seed. They actually get to play Cloud down here. They are now tied with alongside Echo Fog to maybe play up towards something as good as third, which is, I don't think, something we expect. The FlyQuest didn't make playoffs last split, so it's been a pretty big improvement to potentially make it to top three. Yeah, I mean, it's been absolutely enormous. Their, their kind of meteoric rise uh, from spring to summer, they've got so much better. Uh, their roster swaps, I think, were incredibly effective and they are looking really really good certainly are and to get more on that game we're going to send it down to ugly may and the fly quest support <laughs> thanks guys jj congratulations on that victory a 2-0 weekend for fly quest what did you think of your performance as well as the teams um i think yesterday we had a lot of troubles in closing out the game i think that one should have been a little cleaner but i think today we looked for a lot more opportunities and we went over our game from yesterday and looked over our mistakes and fixed a lot of them for today and played a lot better. And today you were pulling off all of these crazy saves and bringing your team in to where you needed them. So how are you coordinating all of this? Um, well, a lot of the time it's just about looking at people who are isolated. So a lot of the time I'll just be staring at my mini map and then looking for people who are out of place. And then usually from that we can get a free flash or whatever. And then also I'll tell whoever I want to ult in, like, look at me, like, I'm going to go. And then uh, we'll, we'll just go. <laughs> You guys are sitting pretty at nine wins coming into the last week before playoffs, but you know your spot isn't secured yet. So are you guys feeling the pressure? Yeah, I think today was the most nervous I've been for a game in like since Academy uh, Finals last split. So there's definitely a lot of pressure on us to perform and try to get good seating for playoffs and then hopefully go in the gauntlet and make a run for Worlds. Well, let's touch on that. What's it like for you going from Academy Finals to potentially playoffs for the summer split? Um, when I joined the team, I wasn't sure how well we would do because of the team did kind of poorly last split, and I didn't think that uh, we necessarily like might have what it takes. But I think we've been gelling really well, and as well as with Saint coming in, uh, he knows a lot about the game, and we've been kind of 
developing our own play style, and it's working out really well for us. You have to give yourself more credit, because remember when Saint came in and when you came in, FlyQuest started up on the win streak. But JJ, congratulations, and thank, thank you so much. And to wrap up the day, let's hear from the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, Avali. FlyQuest picking up another win to move to 9-7. and seven. Again, keeping that playoff picture and the race for the final six spots that much more interesting. A very clean win over CLG here. Uh, when we talked about teams that didn't make the top six last split and what they needed to do to kind of give us a little bit more confidence coming into the postseason here in summer, it was all about the cleanliness of the wins, right? Making the wins decisive and the losses close. You can't ask for anything more decisive than this, really. Yeah, this was just FlyQuest kind of beating up on CLG all game. I like their comp a lot. It's a pretty standard comp with the one kind of wrinkle being the rumble up in the top lane to counter the Cho'Gath, mm -hmm. as well as the fact that you're up against a double immobile backline means you're probably going to get some good rumble ults over the course of this game. The Oriana pick was a little weird to me because traditionally you see Rise as a counter pick to Oriana as like a soft counter. Right. Uh, and so I was surprised to see them, who he take that one. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, COG had initiation in yeah. all five positions. They had a ton of CC, but FlyQuest kept the map spread out when they wanted it spread out and collapsed when they wanted to collapse. So they like Mark said, beat up on CLG. That's the key, right? And Avli had even uh, you know, asked JJ about it. Where did these clean engages and the grouping come from? And it's all about looking for isolated members, but with five engage tools on the side of CLG, it was more often FlyQuest, the team actually, pulling off the engagements. Right, and the map mobility on display there for this first blood, just being able to wrap around, and then they kept finding people in the Whee! side lanes. This one was initiated by Turtle himself when they kind of saw Darshan pushing and everyone else collapses, but a lot of them were JJ as well, being able to ult people around the map and get these things kicked off for his team. Darshan in particular was the one who was getting the most taken out on him because uh, they have a 1 3 1 comp with the Rise, and you don't really have anyone who wants to match in the side lanes that well. And so you saw yeah. FlyQuest just abusing the comp advantage. And I would say JJ probably had more Tom Kench alts per minute than any I've other ever Tom seen. Kench we've seen. In the game. We're going to add that stat yeah. to the, uh, to the we polls. We actually can track that. Yeah, I'm going to go check in our, uh, in our doc later. But... That would be very interesting. That's a very nice Rumble ult as well. Who Flame had been nailing Flame those. Flame had a number of very solid Rumble ultimates, topping the damage charts there. Turtle just behind Tim. Uh, but overall, again, uh, that's the picture of a gold graph that you want to see for a team nearing the end of the season. Yeah, the best game I think FlyQuest has played this, as you talked about at the start of the segment, was not a FlyQuest team that had convincing victories. Now, we have to couch this statement yeah, a little bit because CounterLogic Gaming uh, extends their loss streak to eight. Yep. But this was still a good win for FlyQuest. I think this is exactly what you want to see out of a FlyQuest team going up against a bit of a dead-eyed CLG, yeah. I think is the way to put it, where it just doesn't feel like there was any fight in this game. You know, yeah. they, like Jet said, they had all these tools, and then they finally pressed the go button once after FlyQuest already had Baron, and they easily picked off the rise, and it was like, well, where was this? for the first 25 minutes of the game. Right, easiest schedule of all teams in the last four games. They already beat Clutch, they've beaten CLG. Next week they kick it off with Golden Guardians. We'll look for them to do exactly the same thing against that squad before mm. they have probably their biggest test over the two weekends against Cloud9. And I think that'll be a really telling match only because of how well Cl Cloud9 is playing so recently that it, yeah. it becomes, uh, you know, a very uphill battle. I, a lot of people will probably favor Cloud9 in that matchup, even though they're equivalent in standing. Yeah, and even with 100 Thieves dropping a game and Echo Fox dropping a game and Liquid being at 11 wins, playoff buys are actually reachable if you really take care of business down the stretch. We have a very tight pack of teams in the top seven. Yeah, and it's still just like a playoff preview. You never know if these guys actually meet each other at some point if they, you know, depending on how right, they Right, we haven't even talked about out. the seeding and the matchups yep. that would then, therefore, you know, uh, result from it. But when it comes down to the playoff race, some players bust out the pocket assassins and others save their ultimates for the big plays. But then there are the players who use every key to set up an ally, just to say, I'm helping. Presented by State Farm. Now, in this game versus CLG, JJ makes sure his team gets what they need on every part of the map. Yeah, such a good Tom Kench ultimate to get the dive in right off the bat. Then again, you get to see him 
from this was a creative one all the way into red haven't seen many people on red spot if anyone do that really I love it yeah using the alt for counter jungle you almost only see it for rotations between lanes uh that was uh, a good use there for an actual objective then here the beautiful eat out of the knockback was another super impressive play out of jj uh definitely a big bounce back game for him because we had him on the desk i think it Zazel? was that's not quite right. That's not quite right. There we go. Hey, 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 hey. Quick fingers. I like it. Uh, but yeah, JJ was on the desk with us last week talking about how he had a Tom Kench game and it took him like 20 minutes to figure out I should be ulting into side lanes. Right. And then he said, like, Saint's going to have some choice words for me in VOD review. Looks like he heard those words because that was yeah. a great Tom Kench game. Yeah, as you said, using it on cooldown, definitely catching CLG out. I love the ingenious uses of it as well in that jungle to kind of both steal the buff away, starve the opposing jungle out of some XP. It's great. Now, looking at today's predictions, though, you two oh, yeah. did not do so great. What happened today? Less Mark? great. Hey, they you got my TSM. No, 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 no. 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 Hey, oh, wait, oh, wait a second. Ah, we, okay. We're going to have to official. make another. I don't know about yeah, that. No, 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 no. I, I, so. I was, I was witness keys. to this. So. Do we have any proof? Is there, yes. is there any proof I can get? The proof is me. Sitting everything. here. <laughs> yeah, right. As the unbiased party. I, unbiased? You will do anything to make us look bad. That's true. But then I'm equally biased against both of you. That's true. All right. So in that equal bias, I will say that yeah. uh, preceding yeah, yeah. the TSM 100 Thieves game, Mark actually rescinded his TSM vote, wanted to flip-flop over to 100 Thieves yep. because of the way the day was Thank going. You for that, Did you I see that so game? Much confidence yeah. Thank in you for the flip-flop. So in reality, both of them close out the day at one and four. They can thank FlyQuest for giving them that one victory. Thank you, FlyQuest. Um, but guys, I mean, I, I, I think if anything, that's a perfect encapsulation of what this split has been so far because as we believe things are figured out, yeah. as we believe things are becoming more rigid in the standings and you've got separation between the top three and the next three and then the bottom four, it all goes out the window again. And as you mentioned, yep. the playoff buys are now hanging in the balance. Yep, the top three teams in the LCS lost today. That's about all she wrote. Yep. yep. And the top two analysts in the NALCS lost today. Thank That's going to do it for yeah. us here on the That's desk, which means couple. it's time to yeah. toss it over to Free, Azale, and Poe Belter for NALCS.